neighbor of Mark Lefebvre. So welcome aboard, Mark. Hey, Craig, great to hang out with you again. It's always cool to talk to an American friend who is uh, in a colder climate than I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not too bad this morning. It's nine degrees uh, Fahrenheit, so it's not bad at all. So where are you coming to us from, Mark? I'm in Waterloo, Ontario, uh, well south uh, southeast of you. <laughs> <laughs> well south. Yeah, it's about an hour, an hour outside, an hour northwest of Toronto, for people who are, okay. might be familiar with, uh, you know, CN Tower and all that stuff. <clears throat> yeah, and it looks like I'll be coming to Toronto. What's the schedule show on the 27th? Seventh. I know. I'm anticipating. The if, if Canada is open, if Canada is open, if I have to quarantine, I'm not going to I'm not going to take that uh, side trip to yeah. to Canada because I can't imagine what a 14 day uh, stay in a hotel in Toronto costs. So, you uh, you no, know, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because I'll already been on the road for three weeks. <laughs> in quarantine with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just sit in the bedroom and you feed me. <laughs> I will talk through the door. No, the uh, no, it's great. We've got Mark on today because uh, he just published a new nonfiction book, and Mark's book is the bellwether for Kobo. Uh, if you wanted to learn about publishing on Kobo, but now Mark has a new book, and it is called Wide for the Win. So, Mark, tell us about that book a little bit. So, oh, and let uh, me let me stop you first. Yeah. We're giving away copies of Mark's book during this show. So if you if you comment, I'll give away up to to uh, twenty five copies. So we, we have our crack team of uh, investigators and selectors who will pick people from the markets that we can give books to. So <clears throat> look for look for that. Uh, if you if you get announced, send uh, Elaine Bateman, our our crack team leader. Uh, a note with your email so we can then gift it directly from Amazon to you. And uh, I've got one bar, so I'll let Mark take over because I'm sure he's a much clearer than I am. So uh, yeah, Mark, talk to us about Wide for the Win. I, I'm sorry, I have to say every time you say crack team, I, I, I'm a huge Monty Python fan. In Life of Brian, it's the crack suicide squad. Every time you say crack team, I think about them, so I start laughing. And I know your crack team is is way way more efficient and, and and effective than than the crack team in that in that movie. So sorry for my laughing. Yeah. It's, it's it's a good one. <laughs> okay, so wide for the win. Uh, so the reason I wrote Killing It on Kobo several years ago is there's I mean every book on the market is about the world's biggest bookstore. It's about Amazon. So I mean every obviously it's 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 a fantastic platform. Authors earn a lot of money off of it, but uh, there's nothing really out there. I think Patty Jansen had some books uh, uh, related to wide publishing and, and Kobo. And I know she had done really, really well in Kobo when I was working there. I was like tracking like, wow, look, she's doing great. She's doing specific ads targeting Australia and Canada, uh, things like that. So I did I did kill it on Kobo to try and help people be successful beyond that. And then uh, Aaron Wright, who is the founder of the Wide for the Win group, had reached out to me after reading Killing on Kobo saying, hey, I'm going to do a book along the same lines, but I want to include all the all the places, you know, make, can I chat with you to learn more about Kobo since you had insights? And then she came back uh, a couple years later after, you know, founding the group on Facebook and uh, and then not writing anymore, uh, not satisfying her readers, which is not a good thing for writers to, to stop <laughs> satisfying because she has readers that were, I think they were sending threats. Oh my God, when's your next novel coming out, right? So, <laughs> so she realized that uh, writing the book, and I found this out, it's not easy to write a book like that because it's so, uh, I, I kept updating things. So for example, even, um, you know, well after I'd had the, the final, final version finally done and I kept changing the final version multiple times, delayed publication, you know, Google Play goes and does something really awesome. I'm like, oh, I got to add that now. So I got to go back. Um, and so yeah. I realized those like, like sometimes this happens with fiction writing, you're never going to be done. It's, it's the, it's done now. And, yeah. and we'll have to deal with it. And, and I had to come to terms with that. Another, another piece of advice Joanna Penn gave me early on is I was saying, Joe, I'm having so much trouble uh, keeping up, trying to find out all the cool things about all the platforms. And, uh, and she said, you know, maybe you should focus more on mindset because the, I think the mindset is, is half the battle. Yeah. Uh, and so almost like 45% of the book is mindset. And then I get into specifics. Like I've done like a Reader's Digest version, like truncated uh, Cole's notes, we would say for audience uh, in, the, in the audience. But uh, you know, I did that version 
um, you know, on, on, on Kobo, uh, you know, Aaron Wright trained me on how to use BNN Press because I've, I've never really uh, used it myself because they didn't really allow Canadians. And, and I had been using Google, but, you know, the folks at uh, Google, like Sabrina and the team were, were really helpful. I think I connected with them at 20 Books Vegas uh, for the first time in person. They helped me by answering questions. Same thing with the folks at Apple. I went on some of those, you know, the Apple live sessions where they shared. And, and I've been using Apple for years, but there's all these things I didn't even know. So just going to those sessions and just listening to the retailer and go, well, oh, this is how you merchandise. Oh, good to know. Make a note. Um, and so that's kind of, uh, the, the, that's how the book came together. So, and, and I thought it, would gonna, it was gonna be 40, 50,000 words. It ended up being well over 110. I cut it down to about 90, 95,000. So <laughs> yeah, it's right. not a, it's, and, and, and this is the sad news is the paperback is, is still in the queue to be released. <laughs> I feel like it's a giant phone book, but, uh, and I wanted to keep the price cheap, but I, I couldn't because even the cost of paper, uh, yeah. you know, through uh, Ingram Spark is, uh, is going up, yeah. right? Cost of paper is going up in March. So it's like, wow, I wanted to keep it under 20, but I can't. Mm. Unless I want to, if I want to pay every time someone sells it, then sure, I could do that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, twenty Canadian. That is, it's almost like a, no, 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 it's twenty American, my it, friend. Oh, is it? You're what are you talking? Twenty four ninety nine for the paperback? Yeah, real twenty dollars, not this, not this monopoly money we have up here. Yeah, it's although, almost although it's the twenty is green, just like your money. Spock the fivers, <laughs> Spock the fivers. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's cool. I, I mean the. Uh, the market is out there. The need is out there. And I'll tell you, uh, I took a book. Uh, I took one of my uh, my Cygnus Space Opera. I took that first book wide in order to get in a promo that I'm, I'm sponsoring through the uh, uh, International Association of Science Fiction and Fantasy Authors. Cool. And while it was wide, I'm like, hey, what the hell? So uh, I've got it through D2D. So I reactivated it. And then I sent it to BookBub. I'm like, hey, oh, by the way, I've got this book that's wide. And what do you think? Uh, and, and within a day, I get the approval for a US and UK book bub feature You'll deal. Get out of the city. Like that? <laughs> Man, like that. You must be Craig Martell or something. It's like it's like they it's like they know me. Uh, no, no, it, it, they know me. They've denied me so many times. They've probably got that on auto responder. Uh, yeah, yes, you should lower your price. I have it for free. I mean, it's a uh, so many things, but I I usually apply with books that are in Kindle Unlimited. So this one's wide. I've changed all the front matter and back matter for uh, the upload through uh, draft to digital which is uh, what I use exclusively. And people are like, well, hey, you're, you're given 10% if you make X. I'm like, well, here's what I make through draft. I still make the majority of my money, even on books that are wide, right. through Amazon. Right. So uh, draft to digital makes absolutely the most sense for my time management. And it has worked. And here, here we are. I get a book bub feature for, unfortunately, it's two weeks away. So uh, I, I uh, so I have no ability to stack. So I'll uh, I'll be asking for a bunch of shares. Uh, okay, so here's something that's numbers. important. Okay, yeah. uh, remind me to send you the link. Uh, there, there's a there's a form that Draft to Digital has that says, "Hey, I have a forthcoming book bub." Because what we do uh, is Kara, who works on the Draft Digital team, will be able yeah. to uh, message the the retailers, you know, Kobo and Apple, et cetera, and say, "Hey, just a heads up, this is going to be a book bub on this day. You may want to pay attention to it." maybe give it some love, maybe give it some attention. So that's a really good oh, man. Yeah. Now I, I, you know, I work uh, part-time for yeah. draft digital, obviously. So I have a huge bias for the company, but I know there are direct promotion opportunities. And, and again, every author has their own choice to make. And your choice sounds like, you know what, timeline wise, I'm cool with this. The other benefit yeah. you can use from D to D is you could assign a virtual assistant access to update stuff for you without giving them your login information, meaning none of your financial stuff is compromised. Like for a VA, okay. you've never met or whatever. So that is a huge benefit of D2D, but there are perks. Like I know uh, Kobo Writing Life, they really prefer the Kobo Writing Life authors uh, over any on any other distributor, you know, Smashwords or draft to digital or Publish Drive or whatever. And so you, you do have, have those biases to play with. You're making, which, which I think is valuable. You have to make the decision decision that's best for you on what you want to do, what you need for your author career. And ideally, in, in my my bias is to ensure that your revenue can come from as many sources as possible so that if something in the an unforeseeable event, you can still uh, happily live off of your writing. And, and those are great points, especially uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, before we went live, Mark and I were talking about satisfying our readers. 
And I found most of my readership, uh, I, I targeted specifically older audiences that are retired and they have Kindle Unlimited memberships because that's the only way they can afford to read. And that's all they do is sit around and read all day. Right. And that's cool. And I supply them. I'm a, 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 I have a high quantity of books. So uh, it, it, it works for me. It works for my business model. But uh, the wider audiences, finding uh, those who, who will only use Barnes & Noble, those who will only read on Kobo, uh, you have to be wide to do that. And the BookBub is a great way to, if as part of your marketing campaigns, if you have quality books and, and good covers that they pick and say, yes, this works for me, then uh, they're reaching those wide readers for you. And even if 85% of uh, the people who buy it are on Amazon and they say, oh, hey, cool, you've, I can get the other books right here, 15% aren't. And when you get a book, bub, you're talking big numbers and 15% of a big number is a big number. Yeah. It, and it is all a numbers game. Uh, how do you reach the absolute most readers that you can reach and wide? Uh, talk to us about, okay, hey, hey, Elaine, why don't you pick a, a person or two that we can give a book to, a document, and we'll get to them as soon as uh, uh, as soon as soon we're done. Uh, we'll shoot them their book, their copy of Wide for the Wind, awesome. and uh, uh, we're, we're going to gift it via Amazon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the wide platforms. You realize that, right? It, it is. It yeah. is. Like, all the wide platforms are corporate. Uh, <laughs> and that's a, hey, Apple, like Apple isn't a corporate uh, entity. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So the uh, so, so no matter who you deal with, but your readers, how do you deal with the readers? So Mark, I forgot my question because I went on this long diatribe. Well, I, had a, I, had a, I had an answer to a question I thought you were going to get to. Then go so ahead and ask, this, ask the question I should have asked and yeah, then answer it. And, and I think this is valuable. So you've curated a huge gigantic audience of people who are used to reading in Kindle Unlimited, right? So that's that's a really hard thing to leave because when you leave that, you're going to lose money. You're not going to make that Kindle Unlimited reading money and you're not going to gain that back from the other uh, platforms for six to nine months to, to a year or whatever. I think uh, T.S. Paul was the one author I met who, you know, cranked it out like on Kobo within, you know, a month, he was suddenly like rolling in the money. And I went, that's impossible. That never happens. Nope, nobody <laughs> he, does that. He was the exception <laughs> that proved the rule. God bless him. But uh, so that was, that was a really, really cool thing. But typically it takes a long time and it's going to take a long time to earn, earn the money back. And it may not even be the same amount of money, but think of your readers. If you are planning on leaving exclusivity with Amazon, you have to very, your, your readers, you built them up. They trust you. You have a relationship with them. You have to be good to them. Make sure you let them know, hey, I'm taking this series outside of exclusivity next month or give, and give them some head time. I give them some lead time because they can grab the book now. And yep. here's the cool thing. You could be making Kindle Unlimited dollars three years later <laughs> because they may not read it right away. So make sure they, they know they can get it now. But then also be honest say, hey, listen, I want my books to be available for everyone to read for free because they'll now be in the library systems. And so if you yeah. need my books in the future uh, for this series, which I'm gonna, I'm taking this series wide, you know, please ask for it at your local library, right? That way you can still read. And I know it's less convenient uh, on Kindle, uh, you know, cause there's no connection. I know Kobo has a, a direct connection with Overdrive on my Kobo. I can check things out right from the local library, which is kind of cool. Man, like, that yeah, is cool. Which, yeah. That was a, that was a really cool thing that they offered, but, or, you know, so maybe there's other things you can do for your readers. Maybe your readers can, uh, can have a special, uh, not, not live visible to anyone else where they can get it direct, really cheap from you or potentially for your really, really diehard readers that, you know, you want to care for. Yep. You use book funnel or something and say, listen, I'm just going to give it to you. You know, <laughs> please leave me a review on Amazon because That's they're right. Amazon readers, right? Um, yep. And yep. that can get it onto their Kindles easily. So, so, so you don't want to leave those readers behind. You have to be conscious of them. But you also don't want to leave the readers behind on the other platforms because every time you go in and out and in and out, it's kind of like mama's got a squeeze box she wears on her chest. Like... Daddy never gets no rest. You know the Who song? Am I am I the only one with yeah, the? Of course, one? no, no, no. I, I was I was with you the whole way, man. I <laughs> okay, thank you. I knew you would be there. But uh, <laughs> people are like, what the hell is he talking about? <gasps> I said a bad word. <laughs> I was not a swear in Canada, just to let you know. But uh, 
so when you're thinking about when you leave a platform like that, you're also abandoning those readers. So be careful of what you're doing of the of the of what it looks like when you go in and out and in and out. Because the other thing about in and out is you um you start from scratch every single time, and so the ticker restarts again, and you're like, oh man, I gotta wait. It's like when you jump out of a queue <laughs> in line, and you gotta go all the way to the back of the line again. Every time yeah, you do can that. I can I come back in? No. Yeah. No, you <laughs> <not>, dude. <laughs> you should have gone, gone potty before you got in the line. Even Canadians will make you go to the back of the line. Exactly, we will. So uh, that, that anyway, I think that's when you when you talked about your readers, I thought about that because because again, you have to be careful. You have because you've curated these people and you need to give them notice. Uh, you don't want to shock them. You want you want them to be, again. And I, I learned this from you, Craig. Is you set a reader expectation. You need to follow up on that reader expectation, whether that's branding and what you deliver, whether that's the release schedule, uh, and I think it's the way that you behave as a as a creative person connecting with the community, uh, because then now suddenly you're going to have these pockets of readers who all behave and think differently, and that's the thing that's challenging. Is okay, I'm going to learn this, and guess what? You decided to go with draft to digital. Like, hey, I don't have a lot of time, and and you like because draft digital. Come on, sexy guys work there, and gals, oh and what? Yes, you know, sophisticated systems. Like, just I mean, the reason I joined the team is because the DNA of the company is so author centric. I love them to death. I loved them when I worked at Kobo, um, but uh, you did that for the convenience of okay, I don't have a lot of time because you would rather be writing books, and that's the whole idea. But uh, you make that decision. But what I would even decide is you have Amazon, the world's biggest bookstore, and then you have all these other stores. Where do I start? I've got Google. I've got uh, Barnes & Noble. I've got Kobo. And I've got Apple. Oh, my God, where do I start? Well, pick one. <laughs> Go yeah. and look at it. Uh, check it out. As a, as a reader, as a browser, download the free apps. You don't have to buy devices from every, from every store. Understand, go and browse their store. Understand what the reader experience is. Uh, I know, for example, eBay has self-serve coupon codes. You can go in, and I think you can make up to three a month. And you can say, okay, I want everyone, like, here's a 100% off coupon code, uh, one, one per user or, or individual codes. They'll create an automated landing page for you. So what you can do is say, hey, I'm now on Google Play. If anyone has an Android device or, wh or whatever they want to download it, um, here's a coupon code. You can get any of my books for X for free or for whatever to get them started. You can do the same thing if you're direct with BNN. They have a self-serve coupon code that everyone has access to. Now, with, with Apple uh, and with uh, Kobo, you have to request them. And you can. You, you can request them if you have a direct account. You can request them if you are through draft to digital for example. But just be aware. Self-serve is I go in and I push buttons. And when you ask a human to do it, and then that human has to go ask a human at the retailer, and that human has to do something and then comes back, you're not going to get <laughs> you're not going to get it turned around immediately. So you have to plan these things in uh, in advance. But um, yeah, I, I'd say pick a retailer and say, I'm going to focus on readers here and see what I can do to engage the, with the community, understand that. So then that way you're not going, oh my God, how am I going to learn all five? Well, you didn't learn... You know, you, you didn't learn, um, you know, Facebook ads and Amazon ads at the same time, right? You probably learned them bit by bit. So bird by bird for writers out there. Indeed. And Apple recently changed that you don't have to have an Apple product in order to upload because I am a, a Windows guy. Yeah, uh, I was a Do I was a DOS guy until uh, I went Windows 3.1 with those floppy disks that you uh, stacked and racked and, and updated your computer <laughs> and, and have been ever since. I tried Apple and it was uh, I couldn't do it, even though it was supposed to be seamless and, uh, and, and the easy user experience. Oh, hell no, uh, because I'm still uh, I still think in DOS kind of language. So Windows made sense to me. Yeah. And uh, uh, and it was a nice change. Still, the time engagement in order to get these things uh, working uh, and work with each one of them because I've got I've got the book bub, right? I've, yeah. I'm on uh, like five platforms. Well, I want to change the price for a set time. Yeah. Well, how do I do that? Yeah. Well, Cobe, uh, uh, D to D, guess what? Promotion, 99 cents, these dates, click. Uh, and I'm back to yeah. writing the book and yep, yep. So that that is incomparable and that has a significant value to me. Oh, oh, I agree with you 100%. And the benefit there is because the, they're sending Onyx feeds like a publisher to the retailers. That that price update, if you do it today for two weeks from now, 
It's in their system downstream at the retailer. The retailer knows local time midnight it flips, and that and that is the thing. You know, I love I love Amazon because I, I sell well on on Kindle Direct Publishing, but I had I just had a, an international book club. I was I was happy to get an international one, <laughs> but uh, I had to go. So your werewolf, that was a werewolf book, right? Yeah. Yeah, which was, which was, you know, fantastic. It really helped boost it. But um, what happened was uh, I put the, uh, I had to go to Amazon, I think it was at 9 p.m. the day before midnight. But then I realized, oh, my God, people in Australia, <laughs> right, they're 12 hours early. Oh, my God, it's already, it should be 99 cents. Uh, and so uh, I, I uh, it's it's challenging. I wish I wish they had a platform where I can go, okay, on this day, I want it to change. Now you can do it if you're exclusive because that that's built in, but it's not if you're not exclusive. So that again, if you're if you're flipping, be aware you're going to have to go and manually do those things. And just answering because uh, we've got people yeah. following on YouTube, and uh, uh, we've got our, our crack team is on Facebook. So I, the two audiences do not mix. It's almost mm -hmm. like wide authors yeah. and KU authors uh, almost. No, so they I can mix answer. Sometimes you can find them at a bar great. together. <laughs> they mix great, but uh, I'm answering the YouTube uh, uh, questions here while uh, uh, Elaine is taking care of the uh, Facebook questions, and we're streaming to both places live through BeLive because I have a subscription, thanks to Mark Dawson, and he doesn't have a subscription anymore. He uses uh, StreamYard, I think, just like you do. Oh, wow. Well, great. So, it works good to be live with you. It works for me, and this is <laughs> this boy. I hate learning new technology, and uh, I used to be the early adopter kind of guy, and all of a sudden, I became the old dude who I like my flip phone. What are you doing to me? I mean, it, it's a, I'm that guy. Get off my lawn. I, yeah. So, uh, son of a gun, uh, I uh, I use uh, 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 Facebook, and people are like, "Hey, have you tried TikTok?" I'm like, "Who?" And uh, and uh, Twitter, I'm like tweets, no way. And and so I have uh, Facebook. <laughs> and, and I don't, yeah, I used to be I used to be cool. Now I'm now I'm an old guy. <laughs> it was uh, actually Judith Underlay got me onto TikTok. She saw one of my parody videos and went, "You got to put this on TikTok." And I'm like, "Oh no, not a yes. not one of those young people platforms. I got to learn." <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you what, the the romance authors are killing it on TikTok. Uh, crying videos yes, uh, where they're, they're taking a scene and, and tears. And it's like, oh my God, I want that experience. What? I, I mean, I, just too bizarre for words for me to, to uh, uh, I want crying people in my life. I want more crying people in my life. No, I don't. I really don't. So wait, that, if I go on TikTok and cry, I'll sell books? Like, oh, nobody you should. my books. Is that what you do? Oh. No, no, yeah, oh. yeah. Oh my God, this werewolf is so engaging. Oh my God, <laughs> I want him as my boyfriend. And, and, and. It, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and not making fun. Strange. I mean, okay. The uh, I, I know one TikTok user uh, sold 650 copies of book in one day because of a TikTok video. So no, I'm not making fun. I mean, that is the engagement wow. because it's emotions. Books are about emotions and how they make people feel. Right. So you want to generate that experience, and in romance, this is what you're looking for. In science fiction, I haven't met a science fiction author who has found traction on uh, on TikTok. But if you had, if you were capable, once again, an early adopter, not me, uh, were able to make a cool little videos of like a spaceship flying because you already have a 3D render. Right. Um, think about a TikTok video with a spaceship flying across and say, mm. next stop, this cool world that is your story. So that may have that may resonate with the uh, with the readers and then there's a uh, uh, sound box or whatever where where people talk and it's just talking uh, that one is uh, just a clubhouse that's clubhouse, it. yeah it just yeah blows my mind hey, hey, what platforms talking about wide back yeah. to the back to the original topic which which genres traditionally do better on wide platforms uh it's the same uh, when, when you look at the, the what books sell well on, and I'm talking selling because you can't compare selling to, to free read, so it's a difficult one. But um, it's across the board; it's the same genres. It's romance, it's thrillers, it's science fiction, it's fantasy. So the genres do well in general. Um, you're always going to have a tougher time in digital book selling. You know, with uh, the the younger the reader, the more picture book oriented, uh, the more the more where it's a better print product. Um, and you know things like poetry and stuff like that are still a print game uh, primarily, 
But uh, yeah, it is across the genre. And, and so for example, when I think of the different platforms, I know Apple loves uh, mysteries, thrillers, and romances, and, and they do feature a lot of them. And so does Kobo you know, that they, they sell well in, in those categories as well. So the genres tend to always uh, do really well. I think places like Kobo and potentially uh, Barnes Noble, maybe not as much, but those are going to be places where you're more literary fiction, your contemporary fiction, which is going to be more like something that an independent bookstore would uh, recommend. So I know Kobo through, through their partnerships with indie bookstores like the ABA, the, the books that sell well there tend to match the books that would have been hand sold in an indie bookstore. So you're going to get the more literary titles. Um, and, and similarly, uh, speaking of which, the price tolerance on the wide platforms is not all about only shopping the bargain bins. The price tolerance is a lot. Well, hey, we've got a new book from uh, the author of The Fault in Our Stars, and it's $14.99 US <laughs> because it's only a dollar more uh, less than the paperback because that's how trad publishers publish. Yeah. But you got to remember, so uh, Barnes and Noble and Kobo were born out of print retailers. So they have that yeah. that uh, featuring uh, titles. And, and when you think about it, and, and Apple does a lot of featuring promos too. I think Google is a lot more algorithmic based. They do feature stuff manually, but they, they depend a lot more on algorithms. So um, yeah. But when you think about the people in their merchandising, they make the same amount of money. They make 30% no matter what they sell. So if they put a $15 book in front of people and people buy it, they make 30%. If they put a $4 book in front of people, they make 30%. Pretending they want to keep their jobs. Uh, what books do you, if, if, if your book and a $14 book are both gorgeous and you've done it and they're just beautiful and they're the ideal read, yeah, about 70% of the time, they're going to they're gonna kind of stick the, uh, the $15 book in front of people. So you bet, you bet. <clears throat> We've got a couple questions here. Let's ask uh, this, this one from Facebook user. Do you have tips about how to help books find readers on Kobo Plus? And promo newsletters or ads work for Kobo Plus? Uh, you know what? That's interesting. I haven't read any studies about... So Kobo Plus is available. So Kobo Plus, just for people who don't know what it is, it's a Kobo platform. It, it originated with Kobo and their partner, Bol, which is kind of like an Amazon-like presence in the Netherlands and Belgium. They're like an online retailer, bol.com, B-O-L.com. And they launched it in the Netherlands several years ago. And it's like a Kindle Unlimited reading program, but without the exclusivity. So there's like a pool of money available and it's split e equally depending on how many uh, reads you get. Or they, they do it by time now, uh, time read, mm -hmm. uh, which makes me, and I don't know this, uh, this is just me guessing, but I suspect because it's time read and Kobo launched audiobooks when I was still there and, and, and I actually have a subscription to their audiobook platform, time read sounds like they could easily include audiobooks because time read is pages or, or audio so that's kind of cool uh, but anyway so time read uh and and then and then they just last summer i think it was late last summer uh 2020 they they launched it in canada which is their is their best uh, uh performing platform and so what it is is uh, almost like kindle unlimited uh you you get into two different audiences you get people who buy a la carte and then you get people who who subscribe and and can all you can read and that's what Kobo Plus gets you. So if you're going to advertise Kobo Plus, like through Facebook or something like that, um, th those are some de demographics. Pick the Canadian audience. Don't pick the American audience. Well, there, there's very few American <laughs> audience members on, on Kobo. By the way, um, you can sell like a handful of books on Kobo in the U.S. and be number one in your category. Go and take a lot of screenshots. It makes you feel really good. It makes me feel good. I mean, I just shared this morning for Wide for the Win. And I tagged Kobo on Facebook and I said, hey, thank you to my, you know, dozen uh, U.S. readers. <laughs> oh, no, I did not, that's that's not true because there's a lot of authors I know who bought my book in the U.S. But thank you to my U.S. readers on Kobo uh, for making it number one. Uh, in, it, now, in Canada, it's not because there's a lot more competition. <laughs> but in the U.S., it's doing well. So um, that's something to, to, to remember the geos, the geo territory. So Kobo Plus... Um, I'm I'm looking forward to learning uh, to seeing authors who've played with it because I haven't I haven't specifically targeted Kobo Plus yet, but when I target my book on Kobo, Kobo uh, readers who will self-select, right? I'm I'm a VIP reader on Kobo because that's the platform I read on, meaning I get 10% off all my books and it comes out of Kobo's pocket. 
right? And then I get reward points that I can use to exchange for free books later on, which comes out of Kobo's pocket, not the author or publisher's pocket. So, so as a VIP reader, I get access to stuff that other people don't, and I and I pay for that. It's well worth my 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 cost. Um, I'm not a Kobo Plus uh, member <laughs> uh, because. You know, I, I'd rather just buy buy the book and 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 think I own it uh, rather than uh, read it like that. I'll get it from the library, which I can do on my Kobo. Um, I, that probably didn't answer the question, but um, it's 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 one of those that we don't really have an answer at this point yeah. in time. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it's it, as a new platform, there aren't <laughs> specific advertising channels to push that besides Kobo's uh, right. internal. And if somebody was already in in a Kobo Plus then they may see some things, but how? And that's a question that maybe we'll have Kobo on and have them answer that would those, be, uh, You know what, that's a great question to ask uh, Tara or someone else on the KWL team. Yeah, I think that makes sense. <clears throat> and now we have an, another question, and this is a damn good question, and I know I, I know my answer. Uh, first two books of series are wide. Does it make sense to use KDP uh, Kindle Unlimited, KDP exclusive Kindle Unlimited for the next few books in that series and then go wide all at the same time. I'm trying to understand what's the what's the long term strategy you're get, getting at or I think long term is 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 wide. The first two books are wide and then the next books would be in KU before taking them wide. So it's With like a strategy. 90 day and then they roll out. So so long, again, uh, I well, uh, Craig, you probably have a better answer for this, but just make sure you're consistent. And if the readers expect something, so I know that I'm gonna get this on Kobo or Apple or any of the platforms, and I know I'll get it whenever, and it's very consistently released, just like it's consistently released on Amazon, it's just gonna be 90 days behind. If you set that expectation, you're not gonna disappoint. Um, I think a Lindsay Broker does uh, has done something like that, where I, I think she even sends stuff to her patrons first because they can't get it anywhere else, and she has a lot of followers on other platforms, and then she puts yeah. it into Kindle Unlimited uh, to give it to give it a good run there uh, because she has a lot of readers there. So, uh, well, how would you approach that? I, you started off with the with the correct answer. Your readers manage your reader expectations if you're. If you have uh, your first two books are wide and you have 50% on Amazon and 50% on other platforms, <clears throat> you're going to disappoint 50% of your audience if you put the next ones into KU. And if your Amazon readers are buying it wide, they're buying it. They're not KU readers. And those two readerships are a little bit different. Yes. So uh, uh, who do you want to disappoint is the, uh, is the question yeah. you have to answer. And if you don't want to disappoint your current readership, well, then you, you go with whatever the first two books are. And then you let them know, hey, get yeah. it now on Kobo because I'm going to exclusive uh, for three months. I'm bringing all the books in. We're going to hit that hard and see where our demographic, because as a business, you have to see where am I going to make the most? Yeah. Where am I going to find the most traction? Yeah. And like Mark started with, it takes six months and I've heard more like a year before oh, yeah, you minimum. develop six, that six months audience. to a year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and... If you're getting book bubs, you might be able to compress that uh, time frame a little bit, like book bub featured deals, U.S. as well as international. Right, yeah. Then that will that will compress your time frame because you're exposing your books to the widest audience. And now, super cool D to D feature. Contact them and have them contact the retailers and say, "Hey, you might want to uh, give this book a little bit of a, a, a visibility bump." Yeah as it goes into the uh, the book bub feature deal and you're gonna get it and it's gonna look great and give it a little push and, and give it some love. So that's a, that's a great added benefit that I didn't know about. So I'm so glad I talked to you. It's a good thing but we had the, a chat today, yeah. Well, and I'm also happy that I went wide with that book and I was actually considering taking the second uh, two books wide, books two and three and that it's only a trilogy uh, uh, just to satisfy those readers. But what I see with my books when I get a feature deal is that even though the, the first book is wide, I still make so much more off books two and three because my readership KU, they pick it up in KU. Right. And uh, so that's a that's a tough one because I will disappoint readers, but it's it's a smaller fraction for me. And right. and yeah. what I've seen is science fiction does better with Kindle Unlimited, but fantasy <clears throat> wide and thrillers seems wide, but Mark Dawson has shown he's done both and and yeah. And to the nth degree, because he invests a lot to make sure that they're successful. Oh, for sure. <clears throat> and now, and, and now he's almost exclusive to a, a Kindle Unlimited because of the the power of the promotional tools. But yeah. 
uh, thrillers, if you're going after James Patterson's readers or or Dean Koontz or Lee Child, you need to be wide because that's huge, huge readership that's wide. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I guess, I mean, and, and again, it's a personal decision too, right? Uh, to, uh, uh, to decide I'm going to go for this, I'm going to focus on this, and that's all I'm going to work on. And that's Right. I mean, I mean, Mark's in a, in a good position anyways, because he has a really great uh, print deal with uh, Welbeck and and he has he has other sources of income. So if anything happened, he's not going to be toast. Right. Yeah. I wor I, I worry because I, I'm, I'm kind of a worrier. I lost all my hair just for worrying that I might go bald. But, you know, I, I worry about the, the authors like really ra racking it in and just doing awesome. And then something changes and we don't know what because the algorithms are, yeah. are magical, mysterious things. And you're like, oh, my God, how am I going to pay the rent? I, I just worry about that. So I love to see for, for myself. I use a scribe count uh, as a tracker to see yeah. very quickly a nice pie chart. And I like, I mean, Amazon is a, is a significant uh, amount of the money I make. And I've, and I've been mostly <clears throat> wide consistently from the beginning. Although I have been exclusive to Amazon with at least one title at all times since they launched the program. <laughs> but because uh, just to be part of it and understand it. Um, but, uh, and I've never made a lot on Kindle Unlimited, but I do sell on Amazon. And and usually my Amazon sales uh, in terms of eBooks are are usually between forty and fifty percent, and all the okay. other retail. So again, Amazon's still a huge portion. It's not like I'm, you know, I'm making you know all my money on Apple or all my money on Kobo, and Amazon's a small portion. Like he, Amazon's the world's biggest bookstore. Of course, it's going to be a, a a massive portion. What I like to see is diversity. So lately, just in in the last six months alone, my Google sales have gone from you know crickets. To now, I'm starting to get some traction on Google, and I've and I've done some experimentation. Said, oh, I'm going to focus on Google. I'm going to learn more about Google. I'm going to play with the <laughs> tools on Google, and lo and behold, the algorithms reward me back if I focus on them, uh, right? Like with a BookBub ad, you can target people on certain readerships. Uh, you right. You can target people in 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 um, you know like a, a Kobo Canada, for example, and and let's not worry about Kobo US. I'm not going to waste clicks <laughs> there uh, right now because there's not going to be as, or if I do focus on the US, I'll rank really high in the US, which could, because uh, you got to remember the algorithms uh, treat each other. I, I hit uh, I hit number one with uh, that Canadian werewolf book on Amazon Canada, which is kind of like hitting number one on Kobo US because it's like, yay, I sold a dozen copies or, <laughs> or I sold like 20 books and I'm, and I hit number one because, yep. because Amazon Canada doesn't have as many readers. And so that international book bub, but what I noticed was weird is that international book bub got me ranking high on Amazon Canada, but Amazon US seemed to get some sort of like uh, echo effect. And, and I, I've seen the same thing happen on Kobo, and I'm pretty sure it happens on Apple and Google because the merchandisers in the other territory go, "Hey, wait, what are you selling over there? Hey, well, yeah, let's let's pull that over." They they do attend to these things. Uh, so there's a lot more there's a lot more human algorithms happening uh, at at a lot of the wide retailers. Yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> finding that traction is is important, and I think they do help uh, bolster the other markets because I've had uh, I've had like five international book bubs between my last US one and this one coming up. And all of those, I just changed them, the price across the board, US included. Yeah. And I got a huge bump in the US market as well. Yes, yeah, Because yeah. Like, like you, somebody in Canada sees it on their, their Canadian book bub and says, hey, let me pick it up. And they go to the US market to buy it. Like New Zealand, yeah. they shop the US.com uh, market. And, and oh, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of those things. Yeah, I mean, I'm in Canada. I, I, I only buy from Amazon.ca when I want stuff shipped for free. <laughs> like all my digital products are going to be from the .com because it's a way better, way better uh, customer experience. So uh, yeah. Canadians and New Zealanders are, are <laughs> doing that. They got they got something. The uh, Let's see if we've got any more questions. <clears throat> Somebody's waiting to pick up their signed copy. Look at that. So when are you going to get that paperback done, Mark? I finished the paperback. So I add, I made the last, again, a last change when Google added something on, on Friday, the 20, the 19th. And then I, and then I, and then I pushed the paperback through uh, and it's in the process to be published from Ingram to everywhere. Uh, okay. I am waiting to see it show up. So I was hoping if everything worked well that it would show up on the 23rd. Uh, again, that's that's my fault because I didn't plan ahead properly like I should have. But um, 
but yeah, it should be it should be available. I, I haven't even seen a, a print copy, but I mean, I've done so many print books. I online preview. You know and I'm, I'm good to go. I'll I'll see it yeah. well after other people have seen it. I'm sure. Same same here. I uh, I I do that online print preview and and meticulous because what you see there, that's what you're going to get. So if you have any questions, you need to go back and reformat or do something like that. Yeah. But uh, it, it it works well enough for me. And if I find something. Uh, the first 10 people who bought it, I'll replace it if uh, if they if they yeah. can't. Or they can get that collector's copy. Yes, that uh, first ill-printed collector's copy, which is what we always call uh, bad stuff. Well, here, here's something I can <laughs> offer if your crack team can go on it. I have some collector's copies of a print edition of Killing It on Kobo where I spelled Lefebvre wrong on the spine. That's and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give away three copies if you guys are okay with that, and I'll mail them anywhere in the world and I'll sign them, personalize right. them. You can have one of these limited edition because I, went, I stupidly went and printed a hundred and then noticed it. So there to you go. A, uh, there you, oh man, yeah. look at that. Look yeah. at that straight from Mark signed, killing it on Kobo. So uh, crack from team. Mark, <laughs> Mark uh, spelled wrong uh, Lafayette. Oh, I spelled Mark right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness oh, for Mark that. With a C, they thought he was French. <laughs> was a, well, or you got it from Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> well, they don't Mark even with come a close C. To Mark. <laughs> Mark with a C. C A R K. Here's your drink is ready. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, so let's talk about let's talk about important stuff. You drink yeah. coffee, right? Coffee to die for, Deadly Grounds, great brewery. Yeah, but this is uh, – <laughs> so, yeah, I drink coffee religiously as much as I drink beer. So are you fanatical? Australians, you cannot have a conversation about coffee with Australians because then, uh, I mean, it, it, it will degenerate into a knockdown, drag-out fight, especially oh, yeah. when I, I tell them I, I drink instant. And they, they, uh, they, they start attacking my lineage. And I get even – I even get insulted by Canadians – because of drinking instant, so uh, that's that's how oh my bad God. it Even is. Liz, like Liz, loves instant coffee, and I call it camp coffee because when I'm camping, I love instant coffee. You boil the water over the over the fire, mm -hmm. right? But she drinks it every morning, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my God, how but do I, you drink that swill?" Although, taster's, taster's choice, not yeah, not, her, not like Maxwell brand. instant. I mean, you can't. Some of that instant is really really bad, but taster's choice. Oh, Craig. I don't get Maxwell House with flavor crystals. So what from a guy who like really loves his whiskey and scotch and has this refined taste, and then you go, yeah, we're just going to throw these <laughs> crystallized. <laughs> oh, my God. You're hurting me, dude. You're hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> we used to be friends. Um, the... <laughs> it's like, it's like yeah, Budweiser's as good as a craft beer. I was like, no, we can't We can't be friends anymore. <laughs> no, no. You're, yeah, you're out of here. That's, we, we, my wife and I got married in Scotland. And and my my in laws came over to be at the wedding, of course, and and we're doing the uh, dinner before the wedding, uh, the night before. And my my father in law, who never drinks beer, he orders a beer just because it's like the thing to do, and gets a Budweiser. We're in Scotland, and he ordered a Budweiser so that I got the pleasure of paying like six fifty six pounds fifty for. Yeah, I paid ten dollars for a can of Budweiser yeah. in Scotland. I have seen bars, uh, craft beer bars especially, that do have butt on the menu, but they charge $100 for it. Yeah, they should. <laughs> it's like, if you're going to come in here and waste a spot, <laughs> you can afford it. Uh, I love yeah. I love the cheekiness of that, right? <laughs> yeah, you bet, you bet. Wide for the win. There's a, there's a Facebook group that uh, if you are wide, if you are considering wide, go over there. Ignore the Amazon bashing because uh, uh, occasionally that might happen. But it's and it's no, it's only it's, yeah, me usually doing that. So <laughs> yeah, it's probably yeah, it's probably the Apple guy. <laughs> but but uh, go to go to Wide for the Win and take a look. It's a, it's it's an outstanding site that is focused on how to get your book into more hands across all the distributors. Oh, and I had a question that popped up earlier when you were talking about Google Play. They recently redesigned their dashboard to give you an added feature. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, so, uh, well, now you can actually see sales online uh, in the homepage. <laughs> like, wow, you don't have to run those really clunky, horrible reports. And then there's an analysis where, and it is, I've noticed it's kind of like 24 hours behind, but hey, it's better than, way better than it was before. So you can quickly see what's going on. You have a summary of your top four selling books. 
Um, and then, and then the, the feature is pricing, right? So if you're doing price promos, you used to have to upload a spreadsheet. That's what they changed uh, last Friday. Uh, now you can go in and manually uh, put it in. Now, however, uh, the spreadsheet is really handy, Craig. So you have a whole series and let's say you're gonna do some awesome sale and drop the whole thing. Well, if you have to go in and do like at least six different territories and set the price to 99 cents on 20 different books, you'd be better off to fill out the spreadsheet load it and Bob's your uncle, right? Start date, end date yeah. for your promo. Um, and so what I, what, I, what I really do love about, I mean, come on, Google, right? Is 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 a, a phenomenal company. No, no. And so yeah. it looks like they've given the book nerds at Google, finally given the book nerds at Google some leeway to do the cool things that book nerds do. And I am so like Sabrina, I was chatting with her the other day from, and she was teasing that there's more coming. I'm like, oh my God, please, I can't wait for more. So I'm really thrilled, uh, but that, um, and definitely check out the promos, right? You go and self serve. You can do all kinds of uh, coupons. Um, I'm look. I'm 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 going to be playing with that where I I, I just kind of have coupons for everywhere, uh, and see if I can say, hey, if you want to check out my stuff here, you can get it at this. You know, I, you don't have to change the retail price. You you just can get it for a discount if you want to try this platform. Uh, and and I'll be honest with you, I haven't I haven't. Um, I have an iOS. So I don't even know if there's a Google Play app for it. There probably is, but um, I haven't tried rating on Google yet. Yeah. Uh, so that's the thing yeah. I need to do. But Google, and, and just like Apple, Apple, uh, a couple years ago, uh, when they snuck into 20 books and, and we were talking to them, uh, they, they said how specifically that Apple was going to invest and try to increase their market share. And so you saw with the new platform, they've made it so much easier for direct uploads. Yes. And now they have yeah. help. They actually help you because they have a bunch of videos and and other yeah. like facts to help you yeah. upload directly. Uh, and D 2 D has always made it easy. Yeah. Yes, you can't have links to Amazon in your book. I got one rejected uh, yesterday. I was, yeah. I was I was I was whiting it. And uh, <clears throat> it's a it's a travel book. I have a couple nonfiction uh, uh, travel books. Yeah. And uh, I, I had a follow me on Amazon thing, and I, it got rejected. So I deleted that. And it's hey, just go to my Facebook page. Or go yeah. to my app. Uh, That's uh, like me website. going into a craft brewery and then singing the praises of Budweiser, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, I understand. Yeah. Uh, so I have I have the two versions, one with pretty much all the back matter leaned out to just say go to my website. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and, which is better? Go to your website. You're in control. Sign up yes. for my newsletter, right? Yeah, oh, can, yeah. Can I can I talk about something cool about Apple because we talked about the growth of the platform? Sure. So I was sure. talking uh, with, with Apple uh, not that long ago, and since last year, this time since the pandemic. They've doubled down on featuring free and in particular free first in series. And they're always looking for curated reads there. And their sales from those free promos have dramatically increased the sales for series. So that is, uh, and, and, and what I love about Apple is they don't care if you come through a distributor or you're direct. They made it easy to go direct, but they don't care. They're not pushy about it. They're very open. Uh, all they care about is good books and they want to show, you know, like Amazon wants the right books to go to the right readers. You know, Apple wants and Kobo, they all want the same thing, right? They want the right books to go to the right readers because if they can make that happen, then your magic happens and you start to sell <laughs> everywhere. So free uh, can be a really, especially a free first in series can, can be a huge thing on uh, on Apple for you. And and that that is great to see from from a, a, a company like Apple that should understand that uh, the free samples but they're mostly wrapped around hardware and you don't give free samples of hardware. No. So uh, uh, pushing those things like iTunes, hey, people are willing to pay 99 cents for a song or a buck 29 now, whatever it is, right. uh, or, or 750 uh, Canadian, uh, whatever the rate is <laughs> nowadays <clears throat> for a single song. Um, the And they, they understand, but they don't have to give free there because music, hey, go over, buck, buy your favorite song. You don't have to buy the full album anymore, which is way cool. Yeah. Uh, and that, that probably changed uh, recently, like like 15 years ago. But uh, it's it's recent for me. Yeah. Recent for us old men, right? I, I used to be an early adopter. Now I'm <laughs> now I'm now I'm old. <clears throat> but the, but those kinds of things, the free sample, and that's I, there are people who wonder. They try to give their book away free when they only have one out. I would never recommend that. Don't do that. Don't uh, give that first book away for free. I would say until you have at least three out. If you only have two, maybe ninety nine cents. But you got to have that. Because if your first book is good and it stands on its own, then that read through is what will pay for it. It's yeah. not you, and you've got to have that. Uh, it's it's a it's a touchy strategy to go free on the first if you only have two, and also if you're wide, 
the great thing about wide platforms, when you go free, you're fine, but Amazon changed their terms of service and they no longer are required to match. Previously, they said, we will low price match. And actually, I think that button on some people have disappeared that yeah. says, if you have a lower price, uh, tell us about it. Yeah. And now you can't do that. Uh, uh, yeah. You may not be able to do that. I know some people still can. Right. So I think they may be testing that, but they changed the terms of service. They are not required to match your free book. So right. if you're wide, you have no way of guaranteeing that your book will be free. Yeah. And that is a significant challenge, especially on a BookBub feature. We, we ran a, a free promo through uh, the IASFA and a book, I checked at 2.30 in the morning. It was free on Amazon. Yeah. Cool. We started the promo and four hours in, people were complaining, hey, this book isn't free. Amazon yeah. changed the price. So you, you have, yeah. there's, so I think yeah. the, uh, the the price wars and the wide wars are uh, Amazon. This is their counter to it. And I'm not, I'm not speaking ill of anything. It's just a fact. That, and and they, they do what's best for their customers. Like I had a fussy librarian that I paid for. And then they, they again, I checked it. It's fine. Go to bed. I wake up on an email from fussy librarian. Well, it's not free on Amazon. I'm like, oh. So what I've told authors is yeah. it's free everywhere. I can make it free. Um, and it, depending on, you know, uh, how people are feeling today, it may be free in some. T and again, they, it was never free on Amazon Canada. It was only free in the U.S. So all my Canadian readers will go, "You're lying to me! It's ninety nine cents or a buck twenty nine here in Canada, <laughs> right?" So that, that it was, it, I could never count on it anyway. But what I would do in a case like that is, if I have true diehard fans who are only Kindle readers, and and I'm giving it for free to everyone, it's like, you know what? Reach out to me, and and I'll just give you a copy, and then through Book Funnel, you can get it onto your Kindle. Because again. Reader expectation. I don't want to disappoint the reader, and I want you to read it for free. I'm not losing a sale. I'm gaining a reader. And and that's what I've done as well. Every book I put wide, I also have my super secret book funnel uh, upload. So if anybody has any problems whatsoever and they email yes. me, hey, I'm like, here, here you go. Just download it from Book Funnel, whatever your your favorite yeah. platform. There you go. <clears throat> and Book Funnel's yeah. deliverability is, is premier. Yeah, because so you want to, and, and again, Amazon has to do what they have to do to run their business. You have to respect that, but you also want to respect your customer and not get, not allow them to be shortchanged. So, so long as you have that, and that's why having a newsletter is so critical. <laughs> yeah, because there you can do it right there. And yeah. uh, as somebody made a comment about Apple that you may get fewer downloads if you're free, but read through is higher because free on Apple is kind of new. So yeah. uh, you don't need to hit. Uh, on my uh, my thriller series, the operator, uh, the Ian Bragg series, yeah. I had a a big free promo. It's it's Kindle Unlimited, so I guaranteed I had these five days free, and I hit it uh, hit it hard. I had almost ten thousand downloads in five days without a book, and so it it went, resonated really well. Sales of the next ones picked up, but it was it's a numbers game. It's it's a fraction yeah. of that, whereas wide. Uh, and, uh, Apple, who knows if you get a hundred downloads, you might get 10 read throughs. Whereas with just Kindle unlimited, uh, and Amazon readership, I target, I hope for 1%. I hope that 1% of the readers will then read yeah. on to the next book. And then that's, that's yeah. lucrative because the big numbers, but the big numbers also say that a lot of people are downloading it and might not get to it for six months. Yeah. And that's always the challenge, the, 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 the big challenge. And, and, and I tried to get the marketing team at Kobo when I worked there to do, cause we know people who have, uh, we, I said, when you're a retailer, you know, who has it in your library, but hasn't read it. And you can go, all you have to do, because again, the marketing team would go, Oh, we're going to try and send them books to buy so that they can start reading. I'm like, no, no, no. They have books in their library. Just get them to start reading. The author will do the, their job. And when they get to the end of that book, they're going to buy book two. Because what we saw when I was at Kobo was 50% of the people, when they're presented with a buy button for the next book, when they finish it, between 45 and 55% of consumers buy the next book in the series. Oh, so critical. So, so critical. Yeah. And and it, going back, and if you don't have the second book done, you don't have the second link because you don't know, you didn't put it on pre-order, just go back and update that back matter. And that's what makes D2D yeah. so easy. One Automated, uh, yeah, on. back matter. Yeah. Uh, Amazon, here you go. Uploaded by my uh, by my next book. Uh, it's oh, available. I should say, so through Draft to Digital, another benefit, and this is where Books to Read comes from. And you can use Books yeah. to Read for free, even if you don't use Draft to Digital. I have 
all my trad pub books, I have books to read link. But what D2D does, and that's how why they built books to read, is when they send the file to Kobo, they're only sending the Kobo geo link. So it's all Kobo around the world. They're only sending Amazon, the Amazon link. They're only sending Apple, the Apple link. So they've taken care of that. Now, you could still say, go and review it on Amazon. And I would recommend just say, go and review it on your favorite retailer. <laughs> yep. um, but those are the those are the things like I love the the automated back matter. I even I love that I, I use the teaser feature, right? So I have the teaser feature from draft to digital automated end matter. When you finish like a Canadian werewolf in New York, the teaser is like, if you like this, you might like stowaway the next book in the series. And then there's a little icon and there's the blurb. Bob's your uncle. I didn't have to do that. It was done for me by D to D and well, and then I take that EPUB just, and then yeah. I load that EPUB to KDP because I don't go typically. And then I'll load the EPUB directly to Kobo writing life. Cause you know, I am partial to yeah. that platform. I kind of work, kind of built it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just that little thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but again, and, and I love that because then D to D helps me has have all of those universal links. Um, and, and, and again, so I know Apple's particular uh, about not saying the other retailers. So I, for example, when I published Killing on Kobo, Apple's like, oh, what's this? <laughs> I'm like, well, it's a book about selling on another platform. I'm going to mention other platforms. So then they go, oh, okay. <laughs> You're not trying to yeah. drive people to buy it there. Uh, but oh. they, they like, uh, and it not just draft to digitals, but they like a universal book link because it's inclusive. It's everyone. They yeah, like I, I, had, I had a book rejected. Uh, because uh, Amazon uh, was repeatedly stated in there, the book was Battle for the Amazon, and Amazon was in the as in the rainforest. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah, I had to I had to have that conversation. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you can you can publish this book. Um, so we have we have a question: Should you wait until you have three or four books, not in a series, before you go wide? And and my answer would be manage your reader expectations, build your readership, yeah. whatever your readership dictates. And this is a business decision. So uh, put on your business hat and take off your your emotional, uh, emotional hat yeah. and whatever works best for your readership. If you've developed no readership, then you look at your genre and say, well, this genre may do better wide. It may do better in Kindle Unlimited. Right. It, like if you have shorter books, uh, uh, wide and selling them is better than doing Kindle Unlimited where you get paid just fractions of, uh, of, of what. Yeah, and that, that math might. is critical that you yeah. talk about, Craig, because I was talking to an author yesterday and they're like, well, it's a hundred page book. And, and what am I going to like, well, really, if you have a 12 book series of all 350 pages and you get read through, that could be a significant chunk of change for Kindle Unlimited. A hundred page book. How many readers are going to have to read the whole book for you to actually make any money off that? So, yeah. like, so what I advise is like you do the, do what you need to do, but I'm thinking, you may stand a better chance uh, for this type of book in a, in a wide environment um, because yeah. I, I I think I mean you may sell more on Amazon because it's a huge retailer, <laughs> but uh, I don't think you'll bank uh, on Kindle Unlimited dollars or KENP. Yeah, right? so that, two, that, two, math is important. Non emotional yeah, math. Two ninety nine price point uh, as a sale, you're going to make a hell of a lot more money on a on a hundred page book on two ninety nine than you are with K, KU. Exactly, because that's uh, you're going to make fifty cents, fifty five cents. So, exactly. Uh, the uh, crack team, Elaine, pick people, start picking people. We're looking to give away a lot of copies uh, of uh, of Wide for the Wind. We've got a couple questions here. Social media fee is weird when only part of your audience can get the discount. How do you spread the word for all your different retails without offending retailers or boring readers? I think you just answered that with the books to read link. Yeah, well, and here and here's something that I've done. So, for example, I did this with a good friend of mine, Sean Costello. So we were in a Kobo promo, which was one of the monthly promos Kobo does uh, through Kobo Writing Life, where you can get like, and and you don't change the price, but it's a thirty percent off coupon. And what we mm. did originally is we only targeted people who self-identified as Kobo readers. But then I experimented one time, and I said, well. We said, if you're on Kobo and there's free, there's a free app, you don't need to own the device. Here's the coupon code. Now it's only on this one site, but here's the link. And we used the universal book link to, and if you want to get it on Apple or Amazon or Nook or anywhere else, go ahead and get it. And what we found through this, uh, and I think it's a, a, just, just to give you the numbers, about 10,000 people on, on the newsletter list. And obviously we got a lot of people clicking on the Kobo link and buying it on Kobo because it was featured. But we actually, I think we actually sold more on Amazon, uh, even though it wasn't even targeted to for them. But people, you know, new people signed up for the newsletter and went, oh, 
Well, I mean, let's be honest. Most indie author books are a steal anyways at regular full price. So, so again, that so you can say, hey, this is a promo being done on Apple, or it's a promo being done whatever. The coupon code is here, but you can still get it everywhere else. And let's and let's be honest, most indie authors, they're they're actually ripping themselves off more than ripping off readers. So, uh, the average reader who's who wants good content, they go, really, five bucks for your book? That's it? Yeah, <laughs> come on. If it's a good book, and if you're an established yeah. author, as you. When I first started, I priced my books at two ninety nine, and and guess what? I, I became worth more later with more books, with thousands right. of five star reviews, and all of a sudden, hey, this is this is a book that's worth reading, and yeah. and uh, this is an author that's worth reading. I, I tried a pen name, and I dispensed with it because hey, I, I, it, it was me. I, I was becoming my own brand. I have twenty different series, so it was. Uh, uh, nonfiction, I probably violate that. I know Mark Dawson, he adds his middle initial for his nonfiction, but Smart, uh, I put yeah. it all under my name just because uh, that makes it uh, easiest for me. And <laughs> and I'm, I'm a big fan of easy. So I'm willing to donate a little money for easy. So let's say we have another question. Um, with this new COVID reality, could you see a migration of well-established trad authors migrating to indie using either Amazon or Kobo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, a lot of stuff that happened last year around this time is a lot of the traditional publishers would normally be selling their books at Book Expo America to booksellers uh, for the fall buy. And they were pushed because, well, BAA got canceled last year. But um, yeah. they pushed back their releases expecting, oh, no, no, we need these in stores and featured uh, on end caps we paid for at Barnes & Noble or whatever. So I think... Um, some authors are probably going to recognize that there's been significant delays and 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 the traditional publishers tend to not be it's funny i was uh, J joe penn was talking about this recently um traditional publishers like discovering the magic of ebooks it's like she was at a conference last year a virtual conference is like wow they're just realizing that there's more countries in the world than the us like indie authors have known this for years you know i sell in 150 <clears throat> countries every every month so um mm -hmm. so i think there are going to be more uh, I'm aware of some big name authors uh, whose names you would recognize who were publishing through Kobo Writing Life directly or publishing through Draft to Digital. And, and it's not necessarily um, any COVID changed it. And then one thing I remember happening is, oh, my God, this book I wanted to get, I, I, I can't. I, I was worried about a physical virus, but I opened up the Libby app on my phone and I checked it out from my local you know, Waterloo Public Library and I had nice. it in seconds. Uh, and, and library sales went up 130%. Ebook library sales through Overdrive went up 130% uh, yep. the last yep. weeks of March last Massive. year. So, so I think there will be more. I, I'm, I've worked with several traditionally published authors who had been with major publishers and are now going, well, uh, I've built the audience. And my last book, uh, you know, they only, like, they didn't do the promotion they were hoping. <laughs> you know, like the way Dean Koontz, he signed up with an Amazon imprint because he did it for marketing. And yeah. so a lot of indie yeah. authors are going to go, well, I'm doing all the marketing myself anyways, and I get paid yeah. a year later and there's 30%. Like, so there, there's, there are, there's going to be more, let's be honest, there's going to be more competition from, from trad authors. Let's welcome them with open arms because, you know, rising tides and all that. Well, and, and there's more, the readers can read more than we can produce. And especially trad authors, they're used to producing two books a year. But you look at uh, uh, somebody like Nora Roberts, she's been doing three to four books a year for 30 years. So yeah. she has a huge backlist, and but she's still only producing three or four books a year. So all that other time, what are those readers reading? And this is where uh, we're diving in and filling those gaps uh, equitably because the books look and feel and read comparably to uh, uh, what you see out there. So it's a, I, I am a, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, authors and publishers not just indies, we're authors and publishers, and yeah. we're making a difference, we're getting market share, and we're making livings, and there are people here you've never heard of who are making a good living yeah. as an author. I love and that. And that is yeah. a great thing, yeah. We've, we've been 63 minutes, so we probably need to wrap up. I appreciate your time, Mark. Um, Thank you. It, it's always a pleasure, and like this, we can, we can talk, sit and talk forever, but I'm out of coffee, and I'm old, so that means I probably have to uh, hit, the, hit the restaurant. Okay, I have to get rid of the coffee. <laughs> It's cold. Uh, so th thank you. Any any uh, final words? And and crack team, uh, let us know who you've selected for uh, for the books. We'll uh, make sure uh, Canada. Mark will send uh, ebooks out of Canada. Uh, three copies, printed copies of that custom first edition. 
killing it on Kobo with where Mark misspelled his own name. Uh, so you get that. There are three people. We'll need to pick three. Awesome. Uh, oh man, look Elaine at that. We've got a, the list. There we go. I'll have to come back and get a there. list popped up. So Canada, U.S. Uh, Elaine will take care of U.K. I don't see any Australia. Awesome. So there we go. We'll send uh, copies to those folks awesome. uh, <clears throat> through uh, and Amazon just because it's easy. I do a gift copy and uh, oh. I maintain a big list, uh, stack of money on on Amazon for right. exactly this purpose. And then three copies elsewhere. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. I really appreciate it. And any final words, Mark, before we wrap up? Um, I think uh, uh, patience and persistence are two of the key elements for uh, being wide. It, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of it, it, there. There is no easy button and it's going to take a lot of time and effort. So prepare yourself for a long term haul. There's no short term wins here. And those may be exceptions. So <coughs> just, you know, understand, understand your long term goals uh, for being wide. And, and know your authors and know your readers. Yeah. And one of the things you said right up front was, uh, and that was a great attitude change, was talk about what authors need to be thinking, their mindset for wide and not just the technical details of on COBA writing life, you need to do this button and then you hit this button to get this. Uh, yeah. That's cool, but yeah, that's going to change so often. But the mindset is not. Right. And that satisfying your readership is so critical. You can't, if you're jumping out every quarter, jumping in well ku isn't working for me let me go wide oh wide isn't working let me go ku and you jump back you're gonna you're gonna disappoint everybody yeah you're, you're like the guy on the road pick a lane dude <laughs> yeah. we hate that guy and there's plenty of them in toronto i uh, here i live in a place where five cars at a stoplight is a traffic jam, a traffic I, remember, jam. I, remember, I remember telling my wife <clears throat> damn it why do we always come down here during rush hour there's like a, a, like six cars at the at the traffic light in downtown fairbanks uh, so <laughs> no, no. And, and we'll pick some people on YouTube as well and, uh, and make sure everybody gets, a uh, who we've selected gets their copy of, uh, wide for the win by Mark Leslie Lefebvre, read his whole bag. And what, what's your website? Mark Leslie dot C a. Dot C a Mark oh, Leslie. Mark dot Leslie dot, you do not have to know how to spell Lefebvre. I made it easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know how that goes. Uh, so, all right, everybody, you have a great day. Peace, fellow humans. Thanks for coming on, Mark. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, guys.